Louis was proficient in math, excellent in geography, and especially cartography. He knew as much about naval matters as one could without having gone to sea. However, he lacked imagination and was hostile to abstract reasoning. He was a smart guy but inherited a kingdom on the brink of bankruptcy. There was extreme poverty, famine, harsh winters, and poor harvests. He didn't shy away from government, but rather tried to fight for his basic opinion amongst the courtiers who were divided. His mild nature made him seem indecisive, yet he did have an opinion. It was just hard for him to be ruthless. We think about Louis XVI as this big extravagant king who spent and spent and spent with his wife. But in this video, we're going to talk about the human side to him and also transform his portraits to see how he might have looked in real life. And that's what we do here on Mortal Faces. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. I do have a lot more videos on my channel. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more historic recreations and let me know in the comments who you want to see in real life. Louis was the first and only king of France to be beheaded. Quite an accomplishment, really, if you think about it. But it actually wasn't entirely his fault. You see, he was brought up as the spare and overlooked. Shy, timid, and clumsy. Nothing like his older brother, the golden boy. But his brother died when he was nine, his father died when he was eleven, and his mother died when he was thirteen. And so his grandfather the king, Louis XV, brought him up, but let his instructors influence the young boy. They gave him awful advice. They encouraged him to focus on religion, morality, and humanities. They taught him being timid was a value in strong monarchs, and don't let people read your mind, they said. I mean, it was the worst advice you could give a king. Nevertheless, they had a real good hand in shaping Louis into the indecisive king he became. I mean, if you take his ancestor, Louis XIV, who transformed Versailles, he was brought up to take charge, be strong, be a leader, and voice yourself. But by the time Louis XVI came to the throne, his advisors watered him down so much, he was a soggy flower. His grandfather even said he was ungainly and dim-witted. So he got married to Marie Antoinette, she was 14, he was 15, and unlike Louis, who had a rather austere upbringing, she was very social, with close family and many friends. She liked playing music and dancing and was reportedly very talented at both. Since they were more or less children, not much happened for seven years. Louis was self-conscious and insecure. While Marie Antoinette tried to seduce him, he seemed disinterested, but they did eventually produce four children. His hobby was locksmithing and making things with metal and wood. Because he was unencumbered with learning how to be kingly at a young age, he found himself drawn to the solitary pursuits of lock making and carpentry. It is said if his path in life hadn't been preordained, it seems likely that Louis would have been a simple craftsman rather than a king. One story is Louis attempted to use his talents to reach out to his wife. He crafted her a spinning wheel, which was a considerate present for a clothes horse like Marie Antoinette, who averaged over 200 new dresses per year. And the story goes that Marie thanked him courteously, but then gave it away to one of her attendants. This poor boy. Later on, he had much worse luck with his old friend from the locksmith shop. Nervous about the revolutionary fervor bubbling up in France, Louis asked his friend Gamin to craft an iron chest with a special lock to protect important papers. By this time, Gamin had secretly joined the revolutionary cause. Marie warned Louis that Gamin might be untrustworthy, but Louis said, I've known him for 20 years. He could never betray me. Well, he did. And the betrayal led to the discovery of the iron chest by ministers seeking to overthrow the king. And it's just not going to get any better for this guy. Louis was a homebody. He had a huge 8,000 book library and loved to read philosophy and the current political thinking. He liked fiction and he liked history. His extensive reading fostered enlightened aims. He advocated the abolition of serfdom, an increase in religious tolerance, and fewer taxes on the poor. He supported the American Revolution, hoping to weaken the British Empire. 
However, these aims were blocked at every juncture by hostile aristocracy desperate to preserve the social structure in France and irritated that their money was funding foreign wars. A frustrated populace soon blamed the king for inaction and revolutionary attitudes began to ferment. For a king who tried very hard to be popular and fair, asserting more than once that he wanted to be loved by the people, this development was dismaying. Meanwhile, Marie Antoinette, who loved children and had hers late, adopted many children during her reign. Even when one of her maids died, she adopted that orphan daughter who became a companion to Marie's own daughter. Another example of her kindness is when one of her attendants accidentally ran over a wine grower in the field during a carriage ride. Marie threw herself out of her carriage to tend to the hurt man, paid for his care, and even supported his family until he became better. During their wedding, there was a stampede, and Louis picked up the bill and took care of the injured families. You see, together, Louis and Marie gave liberally to charity. She established a home for unwavered mothers, patronized a society for the aged, widowed, and blind, and made frequent visits to poor families, giving them food and money. During the famine of 1787, she even sold the royal flatware to provide grain for struggling families, and the royal family ate cheaper grain so there would be more food to go around. All of this is not to say that Marie Antoinette was not a spendthrift, but she was also capable of a Christian kindness that her enemies chose to ignore. Marie, and especially Louis, were quiet in their charity. They were not loud about it at all. But in the end, Louis was overtaken by events, and as the kings in France were expected to abide by the majority opinion of the council, as smart as he was, he just couldn't command with charisma, and ultimately, that was his fate. After trying to escape France during the flight to Varennes, he lost any last remaining trust. The failure was attributable to the king's indecision, and he repeatedly postponed the schedule, allowing for smaller problems to become severe. He totally misunderstood the political situation. He thought, well, only a small number of radicals in Paris were promoting a revolution that the people as a whole rejected, and he thought mistakenly that he was beloved by his subjects. And so this flight was traumatic for France. They saw him as a traitor who sought an alliance with France's enemy, Austria. Any resemblance being seen as a good king evaporated as this man abandoned them, and any hope for this political side was lost. Louis was guillotined on January 21st, 1793. He was 38 years old, his wife would soon follow, and then his son would die later on, leaving his eldest daughter the only one of his immediate family to survive. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more recreations on my channel, I have the rest of Marie Antoinette, her family, her children, their family trees. So thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos. Each of your subscriptions has helped this channel grow. It allows me to continue making more content for you. Let me know in the comments who you want to see next. I do make a list of all your suggestions. And I will see you in the next one.